Okay, so lovely to meet you at last, Remy. Thank you. Um, you know, quite a fatigued fortnight for Birmingham, I'd say. You know, like, is it, to my calculations, was it six games in 14 days? I think it is something like that. It's felt, it's felt a long two weeks, to be fair. It's something like that, yeah. So, obviously, doing your calculations, it's very difficult to play that amount of games. But that's why you have to sort of be so diligent with your recovery and stuff to get yourself through it. Mm -hmm. So, 2-1 two today. 2-1 two defeat here in Solihull against... Um, Arsenal in the quarterfinals. Um, how do you feel? How do you feel the game went for you in, on a whole? Um, I think we've all come mm. away from it really frustrated and really disappointed because mm. we didn't show up really, and that's a frustrating thing. Obviously, we played them twice in Champions League and beat them. Mm. And what we did well, we got in their Comfortably. faces. Comfortably. Well, yeah, we yeah. got in their faces. We pressed them, and that's that's the ethos of our team. And it wasn't it wasn't there today. And mm. So that's so disappointing considering you know we wanted to win this cup. So we've got to look at ourselves and we've got to come back and we've got to come back stronger. I've seen quite a bit of you, because um, obviously you've seen some of my videos, I've mm. seen quite a bit of you in recent weeks. You know, I've seen a lot of Birmingham, like I, I saw you down at Barnet, yeah. I saw you score. <laughs> um, and obviously I saw, this, um, I saw the first leg against Tereso, yeah. two, a, a fortnight yet, uh, yesterday. Yeah. Um, do you think that, from what I've seen, because obviously I've seen quite a bit of you, my initial reaction today was that you, particularly in the second half, you looked tired. Is that a fair enough thing for me to say? Um, Did it catch up on you a little bit? Did things just catch up on you a little bit? I think bit? potentially it could have done, but I think if we'd have performed in the first half and done the bad things well, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't have been so tired in the second half because we ended up chasing rather than pressing. I felt was, frustration as well. Yeah, and I think it, it was a bit of, you know, we need to get a goal, we need to get a goal. and. Mm. But it's a learning curve and we have to learn quick in this league because the games come thick and fast. Mm -hmm. So we have really got to look at it, reflect mm -hmm. and move on and move on for the better. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it's something that we can do. Mm -hmm. How are you going to pick yourself up from this? Um, it's just like anything really. I think, you know, we're old enough and big enough and wise enough now. We've all been through it. We've all lost games and it hurts and it does really hurt. But I think this is why we're footballers because we've got that mental mentality and that winner's mentality where we go, right, okay, that weren't good, but the next one will be. And we'll pick ourselves up, we'll pick up, we'll get the individuals together, we'll come together as a group and we'll come back and we'll be stronger and better for it. Mm -hmm. Um, I obviously, just purely for money purposes, I'm not going to hide it, just for money purposes, man, I couldn't afford to get to Sweden. Um, no, 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 yeah, just like, yeah. no but like, you know, I, I, I was here for the first leg. I, I filmed some, some stuff and like, obviously I got some great chats with Kirsty and, and that marathon one with Jade, yeah. which was fantastic. Um, but would you, if you don't mind me asking, to, would you mind just telling me, because I've seen the, the goals. That were, that were from last yeah. Sunday. Would you mind just telling me, uh, telling us a little bit about about the game, just the Tyreso second leg? How, how was it? Um, how did it go? How did it all honest, go for you? It was, for me personally, and I think probably for the rest of the group, it's one of the hardest games I've ever played in my whole life. Mm -hmm. I think the, the surface, they, they popped it along that surface like beautifully at times, but mm -hmm. we didn't get close to them and mm -hmm. they did have a lot of chances. But you know what, credit to us, First 45 minutes, they mm -hmm. were at us non-stop. There was no, there was no let up. But we dug in. We got in at half time, nil nil. After really getting hammered, come out the second half, started it a little bit the same again. They obviously got Penno and Mr. Penno, and I think we looked round and was like, "This is our day. Mm -hmm. This is our day." And then we conceded, but we knew anyway. We'd already said before the game, it doesn't matter whether mm -hmm. they score first or not. We we've just got to score a goal. That's all we've got to do. We'll win the game. We've got to score. Mm -hmm. And then the second goal came that quick after the first. I think it just killed us. I think mm -hmm. it physically drained us, and we were a little bit like, God, how do we? Do you know what I mean? How do we get back from this? And I think, again, that was we've never been in that environment before. We've never been in a Champions League semi-final, and mm -hmm. I think because you have to play two legs as well, I think mm -hmm. you learn a lot from it. And I think for the future, that was invaluable. Mm. Hearing that and being a part of that, and yeah, we sort of we didn't create much or whatnot, but we like we said, do you know what? We made history by being there, mm. and we're not happy to be out. Of course, we're not, but you have mm. to look at the bigger picture sometimes and say maybe it weren't our time to mm. do it. But I do genuinely believe this group of players, there will be another time for us. Mm -hmm. I could easily, I could, I could easily have seen it being two two today. Yeah, you know, in the last ten minutes. Yeah, I mean, know. I think we always have that mentality where we think we can score another goal. 
mm-hmm. and you know I thought it was going to come I really did think it was going yeah, to come yeah. but I think you know what we lacked a little bit of quality in the final third um, mm-hmm. our delivery and our sort of long balls and then our playing around the box wasn't good enough today mm-hmm. you've seen in the first half when we did it the build up to the first goal to mm-hmm. our goal mm-hmm. was great oh, no, it's so brilliant. It's ca- it was capable. a fantastic run by Kirst yeah it was brilliant it was yeah. an amazing and run. it was a great ball she practically put it on my head so mm-hmm. you know we've got it there we've got quality we just need to implement it throughout the game mm-hmm. I think I got footage of the goal as well so oh, at some point I'll be able to maybe tweet it to you oh, not you. that I know anything about Twitter <laughs> I've, only, I've, I've only got three zero followers oh really yeah. you need, you need to, I'm I'll proud follow of that. you I'll follow you and I'll I'm retweet proud. you I don't think anyone will follow though if I do it <laughs> we're, 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 I'll get one of the money then. I'll get Kaz to do it Kaz will do it and then uh, your followers will improve <laughs> <laughs> you told me you wanted me to make you laugh. Yeah. Um, just um, aspirations for this year's WSL. You know, what, what do you hope to get for this season? Um, I think, do you know what? I what think, can Birmingham do in the WSL this season? I think it's all, it's literally honours. Do you know what I mean? If we, if we play like we know we can play, we know we can be up there, we can be thereabouts and we can be challenging for Champions League and things like that. Mm. But it definitely depends on on ourselves and we've got to, you know, after today, look at ourselves as individuals. It wasn't good enough by any stretch of the imagination. As a group it wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. And we've got to turn it around. And but like I said before, I do genuinely believe so much in this group that we can do that. Okay. As this is the first time you're on and that plane behind me is really, really, really stitching <laughs> me up. No no it's really re- it's a pretty colour. <laughs> See look at the colour, look it's a nice colour in it. Oh it's green. It's pretty yeah. yeah green looks, like, white. looks like looks like the clouds have sneezed. Let me just <laughs> No, but as this is the first time that, that you've come on, as this is the first time you're on my show, and hopefully more to come, okay. um, tell us just a little bit about how football came into your life. How did it all start for you? Um, it started quite young, actually. I mean, I always kicked a ball around as a, like a toddler, do you know what I mean? I just had a ball all the time, like my mum and dad used to say. And then um, I actually went and played for a lad side, well, mm-hmm. sort of trialled for a lad side, and I was, there was me and my mate, and we was really young, mm-hmm. and they, they didn't take us, so we was all distraught, and then anyway, my dad and my mate's uh, dad decided to create a team. Where's the accent? Where are you, where are you Leicester. from? Leicester. Right, okay. Um, so they created a lad side, mm-hmm. and obviously I joined in and played, and that's where it all started, really, and then obviously you get to a point where you can't play with lads anymore, which made me distraught. I was quitting football, I didn't want to play with girls, they were rubbish. Was there um, a team at your school? There was, yeah, but literally it was it was bad. So it just put me off. But then obviously I met, um, I joined Leicester Ladies mm-hmm. and it sort of spiraled from there really, joined the Centre of Excellence and mm-hmm. that's where I got picked up for England and sort of I owe a lot to Leicester for sort of getting me to this point sort of thing. So it came from there and then obviously I joined Leeds for a brief season and then were Leeds quite a force in recent years yeah they weren't bad the year I joined we won the league cup yeah. and we, I think we come third or fourth in the league which wasn't a bad th- finish and then obviously the Super League started uh-huh. and Leeds dismantled right. so I joined Lincoln who I was at for three years uh-huh. and then obviously I joined Birmingham this year how did you how, how were your three years at Lincoln mm-hmm. how um, did you enjoy them I, when I first joined Lincoln, I was coming off the back of an ACL injury. Mm-hmm. So my first part of the season was frustrating because I wasn't quite right and I wasn't playing so much. Um, second half of the season, injuries hit our, our team and I got my chance and sort of sort of implemented my place from there, really. Um, we Last year, we got to the uh, League Cup final. Arsenal beat us again. Um, so we, we sort of... <laughs> It was up and down with Lincoln. We we did our best, you know what I mean. We we tried our hardest, but obviously they've they've moved to Notts County now, and sort of a bit more money's been pumped into them. So I think obviously they'll be up there with some of the teams this year. But no, I, I enjoyed my time at Lincoln. They're yeah, doing was, pretty good as well. Aren't yeah, they, yeah. It was a learning curve for me, but it was time. It was the right time for me to move on, and I couldn't have wished to come to a better club. Mm-hmm. And. Obviously, you know, you said you said to me as you were walking over, is it going to be a long one? <laughs> but uh, well, we've gone into nine minutes, right, so there yeah. you go. Um, just just to close with um, hopes and dreams and aspirations in football. What would you like from this game? Good question. Um... I'm full of great questions. <laughs> I'm brilliant at what I do. Um... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Put me off my can- answer now. Uh, dreams and aspirations. Okay. Um... You might notice we're sitting down like today. This is my first. One that's I'm really down. glad because my legs and arms and everything are aching. Yeah, mine too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, let me. I was the filming up there. <laughs> no, no. Well, right. you know, what, what would you like from this game? Um, you know, obviously, I think 2015 like, Canada. Would oh, you know what? As an individual, obviously, 
the, the dream is always going to be to play for England at senior level. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it happens or not, I don't know. All I can do is try and perform consistently and put myself in the shot window sort of thing, mm-hmm. which I will try to do. Um, obviously, yeah, Canada, all the, all the big tournaments coming up, you want to be a part of, and I'd love to be. But I know I've got to, you know, I've got to be in good shape, and I've got to work hard, and I've got to perform. Mm-hmm. So I've got to be doing that. But obviously, club level, I, you know, I see myself at Blues for the for the future sort of thing, and I want to, I want to push us on, and I want to get us up there and challenging and winning leagues and cups and stuff. As they already have in the FA Cup, mm. and they talk about that in great stead. So I want to be a part of something like that. Can you just educate me just for a second? Um, what's the what's the story about the um, <coughs> British team at the Olympics in in Brazil in 2016? Have you heard anything about that? Because when... ask me to educate you. On well, well, I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> I'm just, no, no, I, I probably should know this. No, but, but the last the last I heard in 2012 when I because I, yeah. I, I I got into this in 2012. I yeah. went to the Olympic. I never mind you. I, I, I was living in Israel in 2009. Okay. And uh, he says so modestly. <laughs> no, but I just yeah. <laughs> no, but, but, but to keep me company in my uh, in my hotel room in, in Tel Aviv, I was watching the Euros. Yeah. And England got to the final, didn't they? Yeah. And I was very, very impressed with that. Um, but uh, but uh, you know, I saw my first live game was against Brazil. Yeah. In the at Wembley. At Wembley. And um, but there was talk almost immediately after the Olympics that there wasn't going to be a Team GB girls team. I have heard that. Talk about shooting yourself in I've the foot. I've heard that, but then I've heard there might be, and then I'm not too sure. But obviously, that would be. You know, I speak to the girls who've been to the Olympics, and they just say it's just on another scale. I'm sure it is. So that would be amazing. Hopefully, hopefully that will happen yeah. for the country as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we'll have to see on that, but. Yeah, that'd be cool. That was about. That yeah, because I, I, I was just thinking to myself <laughs> that it, it, I, I, it's all gone. Mind you, I suppose probably it's because Olympics are every four years. Yeah. So as maybe the year or two creeping up to it, yeah. then maybe sort of talk more about it. You know. Hope, I mean? Hopefully it happens. It'd be you can't beat stuff like that, can you? So hopefully they sort that out, and then people will be up for trying to get picked. What in your eyes needs to be done? This this feels like a counselling session, oh. doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope this is good therapy for you. Yes. We've got the chair yep. um, after the defeat. We should be laying down. <laughs> <laughs> what, in your eyes, needs to be done in order for this game to progress? Are you pleased with how the women's game is progressing? Do you think it could be a bit more? Do you think the FA could do a bit more? Do you think more could be done with the media? You know. Um, I think it has progressed massively. If you took yourself but quickly enough. Because I've been in it for two years. I mean, probably mm-hmm. not, but then the media side of things is getting there. We're getting a lot more coverage, which is brilliant. I think we need more of that. It needs to be continued to, you know, be pumped into and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I just think for it to really work, it needs to be where it's a profession. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at us blues girls, I mean, we work full time jobs. And then. Tell me, but now we, we, we were talking about that with Jade. We play we? this as well, and, you know, we give this our all. We, you can probably tell we do. Do you know what I mean? We, we dedicate our lives to this but to fit it around a full-time job is very difficult so my hope one day is that everyone within the Super League will be on a full-time contract and it will be enough for you to live and not worry and be able to play football every day because you can see it with the likes of Liverpool and teams like that who are training every day you mm-hmm. can see the difference mm-hmm. play Teresa you can see the difference in them mm-hmm. they train every day mm-hmm. and we're sort of fighting a losing battle at this moment in time because we're constantly playing, playing catch-up but so for me, hopefully that will, that might not be in my lifetime, but you know, for future players, future girls coming up, I do genuinely hope that's something that happens because, you know, women footballers deserve it just as much as anyone else. I've got, you know what, this, this question's been in my head for quite a long time now, and you're the first player that I'm going to ask this to. Because well, we, we've, got, we've got such a, really, <laughs> we've got such a chill sort of like environment at yeah. the moment. But has there been any, girls that you've come across in your career who have been brilliant, brilliant players, but turn their back on the game because they weren't getting paid? Um, Can someone do that? Or is it, the, is it a labour of love? Do you know what, whether it's getting paid or not, I don't, I know a lot of footballers Do you, do you know who, what I mean when yeah, I the question? The, yeah. Sort of, I know a lot of girls who have all the potential in the world, mm. but haven't got the commitment mm-hmm. 
haven't got the desire mm-hmm. to do it. Whereas, to be fair, if you'd have gone to them, well, here's X amount of money, mm. don't worry about working. Yeah. Now we do it. Yeah, yeah. They probably would have, yeah. And yeah. you do lose a lot of talents. But then I do think, in a way, I like the fact that we're all here because we 100% want to be here. It's nothing to do with money whilst we're, while we're here. We do it because we love it. And to us, the money's a bonus. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, so it is a labour of love. Well, yeah, it is. Like you, you can't commit yourself to what we do if you didn't love the game. No yeah. matter how many people say, do you know what? It's the most frustrating game in the world, and you could kill people at times and kill yourself at times for like games like today. But you want to go again next week. You won't want to be missing football next week because of it. So. But you also want to be making a living. Yeah, you do. And do you see what I mean? Yeah. And, and juggling the two. It is, it, honestly, it's so hard. Yeah, it I'm is, sure it, it is. It is very difficult. We've got girls who work, you know, shifts that are just unbelievable yeah. and have to train at night and stuff. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm quite fortunate that I'm not too bad like mm-hmm. that. But I don't know how to do it. And mm. It is really, really difficult. So I do hope that that will be something that can be, you know, touched on and move, move forward for the future of women's football, really. Yeah, OK. No, that, that's just that's a really interesting question. And I just wanted to run that by you that have there been people who have, who have just got an amazing amount yeah. amount of talent but have just basically turned their back on the game because they're not getting paid yeah. which is completely understandable you yeah. know you know it's it's like you say it's a labor of love and it's a passion it's a commitment but also it's nice to get something back financially. Oh, of course, yeah, it is. Of course it is. It is. That's still not just be, football, that's every yeah, aspect life, of life. It, yeah. yeah, you yeah. know. And it'd be a weight off everyone's mind if you knew, like tomorrow, oh, it's bank holiday, but say for instance, it's a Monday morning, yeah. you know that you're coming in for a recovery session or training, you're not mm-hmm. waking up to go to work mm-hmm. and then do the whole week again. But, you know, you, you get by and you do it, and like you said, you do it because you love football, so mm-hmm. I'm not complaining. Okay. I, I just like playing, so... Well, listen, it's wonderful to meet you. I will char- I'm going to charge £50 for this session. <laughs> and then... <laughs> I'm going to knock a tenner off for the plane, though, because it disrupted my therapy. <laughs> and uh, we can, would, you, would you call me Monday morning and we can arrange another appointment? Okay, well, I would like a chair that I can lay down on, like, flat next time. This just looks weird. <laughs> That's what they have in the chairs. I've got they? a reputation, you know, on my channel. <laughs> Oh, God, no, thank you for no, having no. me anyway. All right, you take care. Take Until care, next look time. Take care, yourself. Next All time. Right, See you later. <laughs>